Let's get on with the balance patch, shall we? After a long break, let's get down to it, guys. So, hang on, we need to quietly, quickly recrop the window here. You know, it's a little, uh, little too, a uh, little too uh, big there. You know, so. Chaotic interruption has been reworked as a trait that offers a dynamic and skillful form of play. By giving savvy players a means to use their abilities to recharge weapon skills. Some Chronomancer tweaks are also in to offer another means of granting group quickness and to clean up some functional redundancy between delayed reactions and lost time. So, uh, well, I mean, Chaotic Interruption is maybe not, not skillful. It's, um, it's, it's, it's RNG kind of. Actually, no, it's not exactly RNG. It's a little bit RNG. Uh, the trait has been reworked when interrupting a foe. It now recharges one of your currently recharging equipped weapon skills by five seconds. This trait has a one second internal cooldown. So when you interrupt someone, one of your skills will will recharge by fuzzing. So suppose you um, launch out a greatsword four, you know, and you get your phantasm up, and then bam, you get him with a greatsword five, and you get an interrupt. Your greatsword four will recharge by um, by. Uh, five seconds. What's interesting, I, you, there's some like potentially funky stuff you could do, like double mirror blades, that like, you could mirror blade interrupt mirror blade for a, kind of like a double mirror blade. So th there is like an element of skill to this that like, you can have one ability off cool or on cooldown, you'll be able to guarantee recharge it, say if you get a mantra pock or some kind of interrupt or a shatter or something like that. So you can maybe you can spam out some really big burst potentially. Um, it's um. It's RNG. Yeah, it's RNG, right? But it recharges one of your currently recharging equipped weapon skills. So what if you've only got one currently recharging weapon skill, right? Then it will only recharge that one recharging weapon skill. So there's maybe some funky stuff you could do there, but we'll see. We'll see if we can get it done. So let us move on. Illusion of life. Reduce the amount of time a resurrected ally is invulnerable for five seconds to one second. This skill should now target more effectively in group situations. So, yeah, this uh, this actually happened to the Ellie glyph as well. The Ellie fire glyph had this problem as well. This is kind of a bug. Um, it, it, it kind of gave you like a five second full invuln when you came back. This was actually, again, a world versus world focused uh, ability here, actually. So... Uh, what this is going to do is when you res someone, it gave them five seconds of removal. And after a while, they would fall down again. It's like, oh, that's a bit shit, isn't it? But actually, it's not that shit because you can actually apply barrier to yourself. And then actually, uh, the way this ability works is that when the illusion of life wears off and you're supposed to go back into the down state, it just hits you. It just goes, bam, 20k, right? Or however much your health is. If you've got barrier, you don't die. And you actually, it's actually just a res, like a range, very quick cast time res. This is, it's very strong in World War II. I'm not sure if Mesmer really sees a lot of play anymore, particularly in GVG, um, because like the, it got demolished, the chrono nerfs and that sort of stuff. Uh, but this is an incredibly powerful ability, very obnoxious, uh, and has now been nerfed. Like the invul made this so much worse, right? Because they could just like, run away freely from where they got res, right? Well, now you're going to get punished if you're not able to get back in position very, very quickly. So uh, a very good change for World versus World than GVG. Although I'm not even sure how relevant it is anymore because Mesmer got deleted from that game mode. Uh, yep. See, power spike and power lock. So both the mantras. Both of the mantras now um, require line of sight, and you need to be looking at the target. This is actually a pretty big nerf, to be honest. Like, um, and it's deserved. Like the mantras, uh, the, the mantras are really tricky. I think they're almost like inherently unfun because it's like, oh, it's an instant cast, undodgeable, un, you know, you, you can't see it, you can't react to it in any way. So they, they've got to be, you know, toned down and you know, you know, not as insane as they were before. But I and mean, mesmer in general is not that much of an issue. Like the, the uh, not anymore. I, I think it's a pretty okay class. Like chaotic interruption and the chaos build was the main issue uh, with Chrono and Mirage. Um, now that that's gone, it's mesmer is is a bit annoying. But I don't particularly view it as um, you know really super super aids. I mean, obviously, you know, it's mesmer aids, but it's not aids aids. You know, so uh, you know this is this is good. And chaos storm, did they actually just removed all the cancer as well? Like so now you always get a days on the first skill, and it's no longer RNG days on the old, so you just, you know, you get the RNG conditions, stuff like that. So yeah, I think that's good. Uh, and this is better for the for Mesmers and for people playing against it, so they, they can avoid the Chaos Storm, and they can also, um, the Mesmer themselves can use it more actively, more proactively, right? They can get, they can use it as a CC on a down body or something like that, so uh, be better for both parties, honestly. It's less bullshit and more consistent as well, and that's, I like it. Right, so delayed reactions. This trait no longer answers lacrity, but now triggers on any control effects rather than on interrupts. Added a three second cooldown per target. So I will just go lo quickly log on my chrono. 
to show you guys what this actually is. What, the, what this used to do is when you would interrupt someone, you would gain, uh, you would get slow and alacrity. You'd slow them, give alacrity on you. Uh, and now you don't get alacrity and it just is on inter. It's on it. And now it's just always. Like whenever you disable them, uh, you put slow, no matter if it's an interrupt. This is, uh, I really do not understand this change because this makes it way less interesting from a design perspective. You know? I mean, what is that? You know what I mean? I, I don't, um, I don't get it. It's very confusing to me. Um, it, on interrupt traits, I think are really cool, because that's actually like a, it's a gameplay thing. It's reactive, right? Like you have to do something, unless you're spamming CC, which can happen. Gravwell. Um, but oh, mantra, lol. Uh, but still, I, I, I don't, I don't like this change. I don't like this change at all, actually. Uh, it's, it's not good. Yeah. Uh, and they kind of split this into lost time as well. So lost time. Um, now, instead of having this like little crit effect, like you crit and then you gain, you get little procs and you get some extra damage and you get some um, uh, slow as well. Uh, it now, instead of this, just gives you alacrity when you inflict slow. I mean, th these two traits are now way less interesting and have no real unique quality. I I, I really don't like this from a design perspective. So balance wise, it's not really relevant um, anywhere. But it's just not, it's just not very exciting. I mean, yeah, you're going to get, you can get very easy perma slow, I guess. But, I mean, with a three second interval, yeah, I mean, it's going to have nice slow up time if you want to give it for power chronos, I guess, for the danger time. But, I mean, mm, yeah, yeah, it's, I, I don't really find it particularly, I, I, I don't like it. I like fun traits, and these traits are a little boring for me now. Um, feels bad, Mad Matter. Hand me the gun. The, no. The gun. No, no, yeah. Not the gun. Also, Bongarina with the sub, Peepo Pants, boom. <laughs> Bongarina, <laughs> yeah, Peepo Pants. And then this one's a bit spicy. So, seize the moment. Now gives quickness for every clone you shatter and nearby allies again. It's a 240 radius, which is actually the same as a well. Like, well's also have a 240 radius. So, 240 radius is not huge, by the way. I'll, I'll just um, show that briefly over. That's a 240 radius. So, it's not the biggest radius in the world. Uh, but it's something. And this will allow you to... Um, well, th th this might be a thing on certain chrono builds that you can run at like, zero boon duration. Um, I don't think you would run this on power chrono because you're, you're never going to want to give up chrono phantasma. Like, chrono phantasma is so strong. You're never going to want to give this trade up. Just insane damage output from the phantasms. But maybe you would play this on condi chrono because your phantasms are maybe a little bit less important there and it's mostly about the shattering like getting f2s for confusion you do a lot of damage with your uh shatters on f2 and look at this guys bear in mind we've got we've got chrono shatters right so we have rewinder rewinder if you're playing the condi chrono but which is um illusions and it's illusions and chaos right for condi chrono i think if i recall correctly um you're going to have a really short cooldown on this. So you've got 21 seconds on Rewinder, and that gets shortened down um, to about 6 seconds, like less than 5 seconds with Alacrity. And then if you're spamming that with 3 clones, you've got permanent quickness with absolutely no boon duration. And all you've done is you've sacrificed um, Chrono Phantasma, which may not be the um, the biggest part of your damage output on Condi Chrono. So this actually may see some play this trait here. And it's, it's going to be high uptime as well, a 5-man quickness. So if you ever have to split up into 2 groups, this is very, very, very high uptime actually using uh, abusing rewinder spamming or just honestly just spamming clones in general right like scepter 2 is incredibly good for this obviously um uh, you know there so you get a lot of clones by doing that like by getting blocked so i can see this being actually a very very powerful trait uh it's very heavily um budgeted like if you think about this for every clone you shatter it's two seconds of quickness right aoe so if you do a full shadow six seconds aoe quickness right if you add in some wells on top of that shield five suddenly you've got some serious fucking output in a five-man situation right um and you know you can you can completely uh skimp down on any kind of duration actually you can just go full damage and maybe that's worth maybe it isn't it may see some um, it may see some experimentation that's for sure it may see a little bit of experimentation okay so yeah mesmer changes there they're all right i i think i would i kind of <sighs> I kind of miss old chaotic interruption. I kind of wish they'd rebalanced it instead of uh, deleting it. It was a cool trait. I love on interrupt traits and just recharging your skills. Uh, where's the flavor? Where's chaotic interruption matter? Chaotic interruption? Mm -hmm. 
Ah, it, I, I feel like it, Mesmer's having the soul, you know, removed from it, you know? In, in, ah. I liked it, uh, even though it was a bit broken. I think maybe reworking it, maybe making it not immobilized, changing it from immobilized to something else would have been good. Like, chaos, like, chaos is a condition and boon focused line, and it should be focused on conditions and boons, and this isn't a condition or boon focused um, trait, really. So I find this to be a little out of flavor, but balanced, and, and that's obviously a concern too, so I'll allow it. But overall, I, I'm, a, I'm a little upset with some of these measure changes. I don't like the, I like Seize the Moment, that's fun, because it was a dog shit trait for ages, and, and that's actually a good trait right now um delayed reactions are lost time though why you know why 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 do I, I don't get it yeah. weird but uh, that's how it goes right okay then let's move oh no oh no guys it's here <laughs> it's here Let it, oh, oh no 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 oh dear necromancer guys oh yeah oh no the necromancer the beatings are here, guys. Beatings have enabled. Scourge really had this one coming for a long time, but it finally, finally happened. Necromancer. The death magic specialization has had significant has had a significant rework this update, revolving around a new effect and various means of gaining additional defense while bringing together a more cohesive set of playstyles. The Scourge Elite specialization has also undergone a significant change, such that its skills will only fire around them when they do not have a shade up. If they do have a shade present, then those skills will happen around their summoned sand shades. Other alongside this change, the Scourge and each Sandshade now affect an increased number of targets by default, which can be increased further through the Grandmaster trait Sand Savant. This change leads into the defense of a Scourge on, has on their unique elite specialization mechanic, Shades, and opens up the specialization to future potential improvements across its kit. This change creates a choice between whether Scourge exposes it to some melee risk but charge in uh, to affect foes around them, or whether they hang back and summon a shade near their foe and are unable to affect themselves with shade abilities, unless they also play, place one on their location. We'll be keeping a clo close eye on the results of this change and making adjustments accordingly. Right. This is a very... Very good change. And interesting enough, ArenaNet show here that they, they understand exactly what this change is targeting for you. Like, the key here is that they're pruning the kit in order to make some improvements elsewhere that are going to be a little bit more fun, right? Because the current shade mechanic was very, very oppressive, particularly in PvP and World vs. World. Never mind the fact they made it worse in PvP by accident. But let's just... Let's cancel that. Um, and... Yeah, it's a it's honestly good design. This is this is better design. Um, it will allow us. Uh, it's going to reduce the power level of the class mechanically, and that is a good thing because a lot of these Path of Fire Elite Specialization and some of the um, the Heart of Thorns ones as well uh, are kind of over they're bloated in the amount of what they can do with their kit. And yeah, toning this down is a pretty much a universally good thing. It's going to make it's, it unfortunately is kind of going to get rid of Scourge. So the trouble with Scourge right now in PvP is that. The reason it was so good is that it was able to simultaneously pressure an enemy while counter-pressuring around itself as well, okay? Uh, this was a really, really big thing. Uh, and now it can't do that very effectively at all, right? You're going to be forced to go into melee uh, or, or forced to stay at range. You're going to have to be incredibly careful with your positioning uh, and uh, kite around be very careful with your shade um, your shade uh, application. I think they probably could have reduced the cooldown on it in PvP because now you're going to want to move your shades a lot more. Okay, you're going to have to do that. Okay, uh, because you're still going to want to use them in PvP, but you kind of can't because then people are just going to jump you in melee and fucking destroy you, right? Like, and and the firebrand won't be able to keep you alive. Like, it, it's it's going to be a very it's in a tough spot in PvP. In fact, it it, it well, I don't think it will see competitive play anymore. Like maybe it will see some people still really really love scourge, but uh, I find it a little bit unlikely. Um, I think it's a little bit weaker. And uh, what do you what should maybe happen is some way to reabsorb shades that have been put out. I think that would be the um, the quality of life that Scourge would need to kind of make this work. Be able to suck the shades away and then be able to counter pressure on yourself. Um, on Have another ability on a quarter, maybe a utility skill, something like that. I'd be loath to put it on a utility skill because it would just be mandatory in certain game modes. I kind of don't like that. Um, but I don't think they can really do it any other way because um, you 
you they already have an F5, and you can't go any further than an F5 in the game, right? So it, it is tricky. It's a tough thing. But realistically, I think the actual, the really big brain play is just to sit tight, right? You've got, you want to sit tight here. And then you chill until the other classes have been brought down to a, a, a similar power level. Because in, like, okay, and again, don't mean me, but in a year's time, okay, um, when all the other classes have been nerfed, like, ev everything is doing less damage, uh, less healing out, but all that sort of stuff, every kit has been pruned a little bit down, then it's going to be okay, right? Like, then Scourge will start to see um, play again, I would imagine, because it is still a strong class. Um, but bear in mind, I, I, honestly, I would kind of like to see it more as a support. And, well, I, I really want to make a video um, explaining my ideas about um, a sans savant. Stay tuned, subscribe now. Um, uh, for a sans savant <laughs> full rework, because I think the actual only thing to do with sans savant is actually fully rework it. Um, because I believe that it should be made into a full support uh, thing because it's actually how it's intended. Like uh, I'll go into this a little bit later when we get there. Uh, but yeah, um, Sans of on the ten target is supposed to be ten. Um, it's supposed to be a, a group support, like a, a, you know, world versus world, uh, PV. Maybe not PVP, but certainly PVE and world versus world support class. And I think it can be that. I think it, it definitely has that potential. Uh, and with this new design, it actually promotes skill, right? You're going to have to be really careful with how you place your shades. It's, it's going to be a lot more skillful and less spammy. I really like that. Like, well, I, the reason I say it needs to be reworked is because Arena did a bit of a whoopsie matter. Like, a little bit of a, of a whoopsie. Um, they made it affect 10 targets. Sans Savant now makes your big shade affect 10 targets. And, oh, that's not good for World vs. World because that means you've got another ranged bomb at 10 targets. They basically doubled the effectiveness of your range bomb um, with your shades, right? Not with, you know, disregarding wells and scepter and stuff like that. They made, they nerfed scepter, which is a very good change, by the way. Uh, but yeah, like they, they've they've made it worse in World vs. World. They are aware of this. They actually um, posted on a Discord that they're aware of this. And they're, they're aware of the issues with Santa and they want to fix it. So I need to make my video quickly uh, so we can talk about this. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Let's just get through these changes, though. So uh, Manifest Sanctuary. The duration of Sanctuary and Wolves and PP is increased from 10 seconds to 15 seconds, uh, which is great. That's actually kind of um, uh, it's kind of a, a, a nice buff, actually. You'll be able to keep those shades around for longer. You'll always be, you'll always be able to have one up uh, as well. I think maybe a cooldown reduction might be in order as well, so you can keep placing them, because you're going to need to place them on yourself and kind of use them to kite around. Um, you, you know what I mean? Uh, that sort of thing. So yeah, that's it, it's it's yeah, it, it's gonna happen. But I I like where they're going with the change. The, the important thing here is, guys, okay, is that this change is healthy for the game. Like Scourge was not healthy for World Wars. Its design was inherently problematic, and nerfing the design of the class is actually a, a good thing because it was inherently unhealthy for PvP and also World Wars. Would bear in mind that's not the same as being balanced. Okay, this is a really important distinction to make here. So Scourge was balanced in PvP. Um, not in World vs. World, but it absolutely is balanced in PvP. In fact, it's honestly, in my opinion, one of the you, you, less outliery classes in PvP. It's very strong, and it will, you know, it it previously saw play um, on almost, you know, in almost every competitive team. Um, but it was not broken, right? It was very, very powerful. Uh, but it was more the combination of it with a firebrand, right? Like it was more the carry support matter. If you think about it from League, right, you know, it, it's like, it's, uh, you know, a MOBA. It's a, it's a carry and a support. That was what made it so good. There's, there's no other carry class, right, in, in, in Guild Wars 2 right now. If there was, then you would see that kind of get, replace the Scourge now, but it's, it may end up, yeah, guess what, guys? It might be Reaper. It might be another Necro. <laughs> Uh, or even Core Necro, we'll have to see, uh, because they actually fixed a bug with um, Core Necro. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that now, actually. So Core Necro number two was bugged. It's pathing. It would like, it would, it would like fly off and go crazy. Uh, they actually fixed that now. So Core Necro is going to pack some serious corrupt now, actually. Some serious corrupt action um, oh, it, it, while it's in Shroud. Very tanky, too, as well, Core Necro. Quite a durable little beast. And good, you know, good in a pinch in some kind of 1v1s. Reaper's pretty bad. Yeah, I think there'll be some spirit. I think Re I'm a little skeptical of Reaper, but may Reaper might work because it doesn't get oppressed by the Scourge. I think one of the things kind of holding Reaper back was the fact that you just pick a Scourge on the other team, right? And then, oh, you're getting hard corrupted, you know? It's, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and that yeah, that kind of shuts it down, you know. That's oh well, oh, oh, oh I guess I better relog scourge. Oh. Um, but may, maybe maybe it has some potential now. It may it may be able to get away with it, or maybe we'll see core. I'm I'm not entirely certain that Necro is going to get out of here because I think having that boon corrupt is just so strong. Like in PvP, the boon corrupt is just so powerful. So don't give up. 
don't give up, Necro uh, Necro lovers. I don't think it's going. I don't think it's getting kicked out. But maybe maybe it's not just. It, maybe it's just less essential now, right? Like maybe you can play a Necro or you can play differently. Like, there might this 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 change, guys. This scourge change like may legitimately open up multiple different ways of playing because you don't have this firebrand scourge roadblock that just sits there and just fucks you, right? And uh, look. In one fell swoop, I think they've done a lot for the game here, especially long term. Like long term, this is even better because long term, when all the other classes get nerfed, like you see nerfs to Rev, you see nerfs to Hollow, uh, nerfs to Firebrand, then all of these changes are going to make the game more fun, less bullshit, less bursty, and less mechanically bloated. The game overall will become a lot more enjoyable for everyone, in my opinion. Right? So um, this is a great long term. Yes, it sucks now if you play Scourge because it's a bit, it's a bit, a bit naff. Uh, but there are going to be other options for you on Necro. They've been uh, heavily buffing Reaper and Core Necro. So I think they'll at least stay around and be at minimum viable, if not meta. Um, so, yeah. Uh, very good change to the, the, the Scourge mechanic here. I like it a lot. All that's remaining for Scourge to get cleanup is honestly Sans Savant. Um, th this is a bit of a nerf in PvE, by the way, guys. Because uh, now you don't get the shade abilities around you so you have if a boss moves it will move out of your shades which kind of blows a little bit uh but it again it's more skill you're gonna have to you know be be ready for when a boss is gonna move you will lose some dps by this not a crazy amount um and well if you have two shades up you can actually hit 10 people which is kind of good as well you can hit your entire squad with just two shades so you there's actually some almost like utility gain there in a way because previously you would actually need all three shades up to hit your entire group you only hit nine otherwise. So, there, you know, there's a, a bit of a pro and a con here. Um, like Heal Necro does suffer a little bit there as well because it doesn't go around you. Having it around you is really huge. But Heal Necro is fine. Again, you just have to be a bit of a big brain when you place your shade. Uh, and there will be some DPS loss for PvE Scourge. I would suggest actually slightly adjusting the damage in PvE to compensate for this. Um, you could hit uh, 12 targets, not 15 with Sanchez. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, that's that's correct. Yeah, so you know four times uh, three. So yeah, you actually get more. Um, you effectively get more targets now. But what I was saying is that when you have two shades, you also have more targets as well, not just with three shades. So yeah, you have a shit ton of targets now. Um, but well, you know, you'll even you'll even put some barrier on the pets now. Amazing. Uh, but yeah. So this is, uh, you know, they, they need to nudge the, I would say nudge the damage a teeny tiny bit. Like, uh, the, the change that I suggested previously is the one I will suggest now. Uh, just give Demonic Law, make it 50% or 66% or something like that. And hell, why not reward players for actually being conservative and landing their shades and timing their shades well? Let's make Sadistic Searing maybe give three burning stacks in PvE. Oh, by the way, PvE only, guys. Uh, I would not increase Demonic Law anywhere else. Like, this is a fucking contract, dude. Um, you know, make Sadistic Searing say three stacks of burning on a shade so that rewards you for uh, landing your shade skills with a, a punishment ability there as well. A little bit of extra damage. Like, it really... It, I, I, I want to I wanna stress, guys, the nerf to to Scourge is not that horrible. Like, you may, you may lose... You'll lose a bit of damage, but it, it won't be like, oh, this class is, you know, 20k, right? Like, it, it's going to suck. But um, especially on mobile fights, which ironically is where you get played a lot the most, actually, because of, you know, well, you know, Condi, right? Uh, um, but yeah, just nudge up to Mnemonic Law, nudge at Six and Strength, and we're completely good to go. So yeah, that, that's fine. A few little changes, uh, particularly to World of Sword here as well. Feast of Corruption damage is down by 20% in PvP and World of Sword. That's a purity of purpose thing. It's a Condi skill, so they want it to do um, Condi damage only. And, and to be frank, this skill actually did, like, it has quite a lot of power damage, uh, weirdly enough. So it will still hit decently hard. It was, it, Scepter was always a little bit of a hybrid in this. You know, Scepter 3 would always kind of, even in PvP with no power, you'd still get, like, 1k crits with this. And that's, that, you know, with, seeing as you play Deadshot, right, with no power whatsoever, like, you know, it... It did damage, right? And in Pv in World vs. World, this is even more problematic because uh, you actually would run power damage. You would be running Berserker, basically, and then you'd actually be like really crunching people, right? Then you're really beating people down uh, if you've actually got power stats with Ferocity with 25 might. Uh, so yeah, reducing this down is is a really good thing. Yeah, exactly as Gornet says, like you can get like big damage. Like it's actually a, a really unusual skill on a Condi weapon uh, because it just does a lot of power damage, you know. Oh yes, Planeswalk, how are you doing, dude? And then also, they this now corrupts uh, two boons in World Wars as well. All right, look, uh, m again, my balance solution for this is actually to make it corrupt one boon uh, in these game modes, because it's kind of like a trade-off. Either you have single target corrupt or AoE corrupt, uh, and it's a trade-off instead of just like a strict upgrade on the skill. And I think that will be more interesting, especially seeing as a Necromancer is um, a... 
you know, it's, you know, a, a corrupted warlock, you know, sacrifice oriented corruption class. So having traits have a downside, like Master of Corruption, for example, would actually be very flavorsome, I think. Um, and to be honest, one AoE boon crop, that would absolutely still see play in World vs. World, um, uh, especially because this is where the skill really sees a lot of, you know, use for the corrupt, AoE corrupt, right? It would still be a great skill. Uh, two, I actually think it's still too strong um, for an AoE five target ranged boon crop. It's still good. Um, uh, even like, you know, it's still incredibly strong. So even at one, you'd still be using that, right? A downside for choosing Grandmaster. Grandmaster traits are irrelevant because now you don't pick, you don't go halfway into a trait line. There is no difference between an adept trait and a Grandmaster trait. Also, on top of that, I don't, I think it doesn't matter if it has a downside. Um, uh, even if it's a Grandmaster trait or whatever it is, because it, yeah, it, it's in flavor. Like, Master of Corruption has a downside, in a way, right? It's a trade-off, like, it's a horizontal thing. Like, right now, Devouring Darkness is just better than uh, Feast of Corruption, right? Like, having it be a trade-off, I think it's more interesting, more flavorsome, you know? So, they, they, there are a few bug fixes here as well. They fi Yeah, this is weird. Gra this was, I, I know this bug. Like, um, Greatsword 5 on Reaper would just randomly disappear sometimes. Very unusual. Uh, now they fixed that. Nice. And Bloodbond. Bloodbond, this is actually one of the more infamous uh, bugs uh, in the game, actually. Uh, so, this would... This is a trait in Blood. Uh, blood uh, Adept trait. Let me just show you. Let me just show you real quick. So, what this does is, when you get a certain amount of bleed stacks, you are going to apply this signet to them. This signet that means you steal life from them for a few attacks. Now, this was previously bugged, and what it would do um, is that it would also cast the actual skill that would heal you for 4,000. So this was like a massive heal every 20 seconds. Uh, and this is a this is a pretty brutal nerf, to be honest. Like, this is mainly used um, in PvP uh, on stuff like uh, Core Necro and uh, Blood Scourge as well. Uh, it's still a pretty good trait, but I, I think you may see people kind of lean maybe a little bit more towards the res trait. It's certainly more even with the, the res trait now as well. Um, on Core Necro, you're probably still going to go with... Um, Blood Bond, because you're not really much of a Reza. You're more of a, almost like a duelist in a way. You know, you're kind of like a single target guy um, and, and less of a, of a carry. But I think you know, there's, there's, you could debate taking both of these traits. Now, it's still a solid trait. It will heal you for about two, two and a half K every 20 seconds, which is a, which is a solid amount of sustain rate. You know, it's like 100 health a second, um, you know, like kind of like having like a permanent regen buff on you. Uh, but nowhere near as strong as it was before. It was very, very, very strong before and considerably less so now uh, by getting those bleed sacks up. And, and, and the Reza trade is probably looking pretty good because dude those res traits man they're really obnoxious res your firebrand you know carry your firebrand yeah nice uh, but there you go blood bond fixed deserved it really uh blood scourge was kind of an annoying thing and core necro with blood was like oh mega aid actually and this will make it a bit less aids like core necro will still be great though like bear that in mind like core necro hasn't been touched and actually it's kind of been buffed because they fixed a bug with shroud 2 where the printer would not home correctly not seek in properly so yeah this is pretty big Pretty, pretty big. Okay. So, moving on to Death Magic. This is cool. We have got a full rework to Death Magic. Full rework. And oh boy, is that exciting. So, this trait line has now been reworked. Many traits now revolve around a new effect called Death's Carapace that increases toughness by 20 for each stack up to a maximum of 30 stacks for 600 toughness. Death's Carapace stacks are applied for 10 seconds from all traits except Flesh of the Master. So, the minor traits are now as follows. Armored Shroud, you get five sacks of Death's Carapace when entering Shroud. This is kind of a nerf, kind of, it's like a buff nerf. So previously what this would do, is it would just give you extra toughness while you're in Shroud. Now, as soon as you go in Shroud, you get five stacks, but those could also linger when you leave Shroud as well, and they last for 10 seconds. Uh, so that will give you 100 toughness when you go in there. And Soul Comprehension, this one gives you more, um, more life or some deaths. It now gives you a stack of Death's Carabus for each kill you participate in. So, kind of a PvE thing there, really. Like, in PvP, like, it, you know, it's a tiny nudge. Like, in World vs. World, that could be pretty good, but I don't really see you playing, using this in this line in World vs. World. It's kind of like a, it's almost like a flavor line, really. I, I'd love to see even more. I, I, I like, you know, minions are fun. I want to see some minion builds come back, but they're honestly, to be fair, minion builds are actually godlike in open world, actually. Like, the Death Nova with Death Nova, um, summoning all those little minions, it's actually god tier. Like, you, you are... You're a beast. You're you're a flat, unstoppable machine. Um, in in um in world versus in PvP, not PvP. Sorry, in in PvE with this like open world PvE, like you, you can't be defeated. Like you you just 
the minions will just be there and they'll be all over the place going crazy. And this will even make that even more extreme now as well. Uh, but yeah, there you go. And then finally, Beyond the Veil. Uh, this trait has been reworked. It now reduces condition damage by 10% while the Necromancer has at least 10 sacks of Death Carabas. So you've got 10 sacks of Death Carabas, condition damage is down by 10%. I mean, that is, that's pretty good. You know, that's actually pretty strong. You know, um, because getting Death Carabas doesn't seem to be that difficult, especially with some of the traits that you'll see um, a little bit later on. So, uh, let's look at these traits then. Adapt. Instead of granting armor for each minion, this trait now causes the Necromancer's minions to grant them two Death Carabas stacks as long as the minions are alive. So yeah, each minion will now give you 40 toughness that you've got up, uh, and of course contribute to this these stacks that you need for some other traits as well. Uh, this is basically the same, um, and it still gives the extra health, I think. Yep, it still gives the extra health. So yeah, there you go. You get 40 toughness for every minion you've got up. So actually a, a buff to the trait, I believe, actually. Because I think it just used to be 20. So Putrid Defense. This trait has changed positions and its functionality has changed. It now causes poison to deal 15% more damage and grants Death's Carapace. One Death's Carapace stack when applying poison. Oh. You know, that, that is a surprisingly good trait. 15% extra poison damage is pretty big. I mean, you don't have a crazy amount of poison on Necro, but I think what this is almost aimed at is actually aimed at Reaper. Uh, because when you do a Reaper spin, you're going to apply a massive amount of poison, and you'll get you'll stack up to like nearly 30 stacks, actually, almost immediately with Putrid Defense. So you're going to end up really tanky if you do, like, with Reaper spin to win on this. Like, you know, maybe in a PvP team fight, you'll be able to be really durable. Because bear in mind, guys, on Reaper... Check Reaper out. When you go in Reaper Shroud, right, you also have some other pretty... Hang on, can I look at Reaper abilities? I cannot. All is lost. But yeah, in Reaper Shroud, you have um, a thing that gives you 20% damage reduction on power and condition damage. So you'll have maybe another 10% reduction with condition damage, and you'll have um, another 600 toughness. And on top of that, you've got 50% power damage reduction. Because that's a hidden factor of Death Shroud. gives you 50% power damage reduction. Maybe you've got protection as well from your Firebrand. Dude, you're going to be invulnerable while you're in Reaper Shroud with all this stuff. If you actually had Death Magic, you're going to be so hard to kill. Uh, but there's like, will you do damage? That's another thing entirely. But man, you're going to do so much damage if you take some like future defense. And um, Shrouded Removal now does this trait change position in the previous effects. Now got three Death Carabas stacks when a condition is removed. Is that when any condition is removed? Oh, gain Carabas from removing conditions from yourself. Oh, so I guess if you can kind of use that with consume conditions to get a massive amount of Carapace stacks as well. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this trait is still not, I'm, I'm not really that enthused about it, but. I mean, hey, that's some cleanse, but I think it's not as good as the other ones. Let us continue. Master traits. Necromantic corruption is the same. It's still, this is a really cool trait. Like, the minions transfer condies. Used to be so good in PvE, but now it's trait lies unused and unloved. Feels bad, man. Oh, man. Oh, boy. And then Dark Defiance. If you're disabled, gain protection. Incoming condition damage is reduced while you have protection. See, this is where things can really get to, really get exciting, man. Uh, this is where it gets ultra, ultra spicy, dude. I mean, holy shit. Uh, if you have, if you take this trait, well, it's going to be a toss-up between Deadly Strength and Dark Defiance, right? Because both those traits are so good. Like, oh, oh man, these traits are actually so powerful. Like, it's, it's a case of you can fit this in, in a build, right? You know? Um... If you're disabled, gain protection. Incoming condition damage is reduced while you have protection. So suppose you're, you're in a team fight, Firebrand's giving you protection, you get stunned, you're going to get protection as well. Now you've got another 20% condition damage reduction, in addition to your 10% from Beyond the Veil as well. So protection is now reducing your condition damage by 33%, your power damage by 33%, you've got 600 extra toughness or something like that, like maybe 400 extra toughness. You've got 50% um, damage reduction while in Shroud from power damage, 30% from conditions. I mean, holy shit shit, dude. You're going to be a beast. You're actually going to be a beast, man. What's the best P Necro build for PvE Necro, though? Oh, it's just like regular Scourge. Or is the Scourge is still going to be really, really good. Probably. Or maybe some kind of, uh, well, I think Reaper is great as well. Honestly, every, every Necro build is like insane. It's like just pure god mode. And then Deadly Strength. This is also extra spicy. Carapace X grant power. So now you've got 300 power and 600 toughness from all of your Carapace X if you're able to maintain 30. That's pretty good. You know, that is pretty darn good, if you ask me. And then lining up the synergy in the Grandmaster stuff. So Death Nova, they basically just fixed it, really. Um, Death Nova was a bit, the, 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 the uh, lesser poison card was confusing people because it was like corrosive poison card, but it actually wasn't, you know. Uh, yeah. 
And then Death Nova, they just they buffed it a little bit in PvE. This trait, by the way, is insane in open world. Because every time you kill a little mob, you're going to get an extra minion friend, basically. Um, every, every three seconds. And then he's going to be exploding, eventually applying AoE poison. Which might give you stacks, by the way, because of Putrid Defense, right? Because, you know, they apply AoE poison. So you're going to get loads of stacks from that. And it does more damage, too. So, like, uh, De Death Nova's got... I, I love the synergies here. Like, the synergies here are so cool, you know? They're so, so cool. You know? They are so, so cool boys. I do like it a lot. And it feels good. It feels good. So, yeah. Death Nova, that is a new meme. And then Corruptor's Fervor, dude. Corruptor's Fervor uh, has also been reworked a little bit. This used to... It, it's kind of fairly similar kind of effect. But, yeah. If you get over 25... Uh, Carapace stacks, you gain permanent protection, basically. It pulses every three seconds. And whenever you apply a Comdi, you gain one stack of Death Carapace for ten seconds. So, basically, you've got to apply two and a half um, stacks per second somehow. But here's the thing, right? Like, bleeding on, you know, uh, for example, on Scepter 2 is going to count as three. Um, and it's going to, you know, the Cripple counts as well. Like, the Torment is going to be, like, seven stacks on Scepter 3. Uh, the Burning on your shade skills or whatever. Like, this is, you, you can probably see this being used on, like, a, a Scourge ability. Scourge build, something like that, with a lot of condition application. And then you get Permaprot. I mean, that is... That is that's pretty spicy. You know, that that is pretty fucking spicy, dude. You know you know what I mean? Like, that is juicy. Oh, yeah, there's no way you would ever give up Soul Reaping because of death perception, right? That's... It's, it's insane. You're not going to get that. There's no way to maintain 25 seconds on power builds. Well, yeah, I mean, that, I, that, I think it would be too good if you could, right? Scourge is unplayable. I mean, yeah, it's, it's not going to fare so well against all the other classes. But don't worry, like, give it a year and it might be playable again. Um, I'm not even joking. Like, when all the other classes get nerfed, I think it will be playable again. So, yeah, I, I, honestly, I love this rework. I, even if it isn't really that good, um, it's fun. All in all, love, some, love the changes to Necro. Really good design on this to address um, uh, address uh, Scourge finally with its design. Uh, I think this is very good for the game overall. Could maybe do with a little bit of a nudge in PvE, and it needs a, and Sansomot needs a complete rework. But I'll do another video about this. Like this is you know uh, we can't do that. No, we 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 don't have time for that, guys. We just don't have time because I could talk for hours. All right? Okay, Ranger. In this update, we're making a major change to sword skills in order to better improve their flow during combat. Monarch Sleep, Hornet Sting, and Serpent Strike are all shuffling around in new slots, which should make the weapon a little easier to understand. We're also including some enhancement for the offhand dagger, which has been a pretty weak weapon that hasn't kept up with the pace of the game very well. Finally, we're simplifying the Greatsword's counterattack skill and taking some power out of the chain uh, attack sequence. We hope these changes will make the weapon feel a little smoother uh, while removing some of the frustrating random dodges that happen when fighting against it. Well, yeah, it is a bit weird. Like, yeah, every third attack on Greatsword will just give you an evade. It's like, oh, yeah, meme. Uh, but, I mean, there you go, right? Ah, uh, look. The first change is, I think this has been requested. How long has this been requested for in World Buzzer? It's like, nerf the stupid sniper soul beast, dude. I'm amazed that... We, we, why haven't we seen like a Heisen montage of this? It's like even more AIDS than Dead Ice in, in some respect. I guess it's because it doesn't really have any way to stealth itself, I guess. Um, but anyway, anyway, I guess it's a bit less versy. You could actually react to it. <laughs> But they reduce the damage by 14% and the maximum, yeah, the minimum damage by 14% and the maximum by 11%. Like, that is not enough. It's still going to be crit for, like, 6k auto attacks at max range. It's not, what, why? That was just terrible. Like, delete it. Like, it just, it, no one likes it. It's not fun. It, it, it's, it's, it just, you just get one shot at range. Like, you're having a good time? You, you like that shit? I think some, a lot of Ranger players, really, it kind of pissed them off, but maybe this is better. I don't really play a lot of Ranger, so, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't really know. Uh, but, uh, I don't know. We'll have to see. We will have to see. Yep. Yeah. So, this is the Dagger Offhand. Dagger Offhand, uh, base damage is up by 200%, this, and it does double damage. It inflicts two additional points, like if a foe has a movement impairing condition. So... If, I mean, damn, dude. Uh, that's it's kind of intense. Like, um, this is going to be a pretty key skill, like in your kind of pressure toolkit as well. And you're going to get five poison stacks uh, as well. Like, this is a weapon that you would see occasionally um, in PvP uh, with the kind of like the the bunker soul beast, right? Like the real node hold meme, you know, uh, with the, the the dagger offhand as well. Uh, so you know, you you would uh, you know, it's like the uh, what, what would you end up playing on this? It would, it would be sort of like uh, like sword dagger. 
um, sword warhorn stuff like that. You know, I don't know. Exa I don't. Know, I don't remember exactly where you play. It hasn't been played for a while because it kind of got it got shoved out of the meta by by other things. Right, it doesn't really see a lot of play uh, anymore. But yeah, I mean, ah, you could probably get like a pretty decent, you know, a decent chunk of damage there. Uh, from the stalker sorry so yeah it's good they're trying to tune some other stuff as well and this kind of interaction is always good like i i really like interactions like this like have a condition like conditional abilities that you know you need to actually use intelligently and your opponent needs to recognize that as well i i really like it a lot actually it's uh it's a, a good one it is a good one so Crippling Talon, and this is the fifth skill, which you can kind of combo with the dagger there as well, the fifth skill. It's got an ammo system with a 15 second count recharge in time of one second recharge from uses. Reduce cripple duration from six to four, and reduce the bleeding from eight to six. So basically it traded off some duration for having an ammo, so you can kind of do a double pop right at the start, which is a fair change. Like, I'm not sure how I really feel about the ammo, but I mean, I guess this gives you two chances to get the combo instead of only one uh, with just the dagger into the stalker strike. So, I mean, there you go. I guess it actually just gives it a little bit of usability. Bit of usability. And then Hornet's thing. This, I think these are the contentious changes here. So uh, they changed how Sword works. Hornet's thing, which was um, the, well, it was the first part of the Sword Dodge thingy on Sword 2. Okay. Uh, it was, it's now been moved to Weapon Slot 3 and it recharges Monarch Sleep if you hit, right? Um, and its recharge has been increased from 8 seconds to 15 seconds. So the recharge is up, but it has this other component that if you land it, it's going to fully recharge uh, Monarch's Leap. And Monarch's Leap is now your Sword 2 as well uh, on Sword. So the way this used to work was, right, Sword 2 would evade you back, and then you'd get a flip skill to leap back in. Now, you could use this for mobility to move around the map, or you could actually use it for evasion, like leap in, leap out, right? That sort of thing. Now... Uh, you can use both of those things separately, one of them having a slightly increased cooldown, but you can always use both of them in any situation, right? Uh, so, well, you know, there you go. Moving on, uh, Serpent Strike is now the follow-up to Monarch's Leap. So now, you leap in, and then you can do a Serpent Strike. You leap in, then do a Serpent Strike. So, yeah, that, that's how it is, um there, but you don't have permanent access to Serpent Strike. Serpent Strike used to have a 15 second cooldown, so they actually reduced the cooldown of Serpent Strike as well, because that is, it used to be 15 seconds if I recall correctly, and now it's actually only 8 seconds, but you have to use Monarch Sleep to actually get to it. But that's not the end of the world to use that, because you can use this in melee and kind of leap at them, right, and then immediately use it. Uh, so, oh, interesting, right? I mean, very, very interesting stuff. Interesting beans. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm not really sure what to make of that. Like, maybe that makes a little bit more sense to have it like that, but I'm not sure if it does. I, I, I don't really know what to make of that. Maybe, so, I think that's going to be, I think I can't tell you if that's good or not. I think uh, I'll, you have to make up your own mind. I, I'm not sure if anyone can tell you if that's good or not. I think you've just got to make up your own mind there. I think both of these, both of the approaches are perfectly valid and people are just going to have to get used to it uh, and, and how it is right now. Like, the, the way the evades kind of lock together are different. Like, you always have one permanently available, but now you always have to leap back. So I think it's maybe a bit more annoying because to get your evade, you always have to leap back or leap in to get your evade. So like, it's arguably, it's a bit worse, but yeah, this seems like a bit of an odd change. It doesn't seem to really really do that much or make it more simple or anything like, I, I, it's, it's, I don't know I don't know what the hell is going on it's just it's just a change right then swoop they bug fixed it, it the, the cast yeah the casting bar ended too soon right didn't actually that was that was kind of a weird meme and then counter attack remove the crippling throw follow-up skill this th uh, skill no longer uses counter attack kick when blocking they actually like massively buffed this they like hard buffed this actually uh, now when you get a block with your greatsword, you keep blocking, and then it's a skill flip, and you can do the kick. And you can kick three people as well. And you evade when you're kicking, and it's faster too. So, well, I mean, the evade, you know, obviously is going to be short because it activates faster, but still, you're evading, you're kicking. Like, this is a pretty significant buff to, uh, the greatsword, uh, for, for ranger injury as well, because, you know, that was always such a... It, they, they, it's right that they fix this, like, regardless of balance, because it's such a weird ability. Like, it would, like, auto-proc this sometimes. It was, like, really unusual. Uh, but, well, there you go, right? And power stab, which is the final auto attack on greatsword, it means it, it it almost does the same thing in a way. Like what it does is it gives you 15 endurance instead of giving you some evade runs, which is kind of better. Like it, it's more it's more gameplay oriented. So if you land this, you're gonna get 15 endurance, which is about one third of a dodge, which you can then use to evade, as opposed to just giving you some random evade frames, which is not that useful. This is honestly kind of a buff here, you know. Like it's it's a it's a bit of a buff. 
uh, to be frank, because you, you'll probably, a, a skilled player will be, will be better off with 15 endurance than random evade frames, I think. So yeah, um, uh, these changes for Ranger, th they're they're a bit weird. <laughs> I don't really know exactly what to make of them. Uh, I don't think this really changes too much. I, I kind of like, I love the dagger changes from a, a theme perspective. I think it's cool to have these kind of combos you can line up, all that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah. There you go. It's Ranger. Ranger, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, like Soul Beast. It, you know, it's still going to be sniping people down in World vs. World. Don't worry. It's gone. You know, it's, it's still there. You're still going to be able to, like, you know, get people with those big auto attacks. You know, big skilled gameplay right there. Um, and, you know, you can also one-shot people with a good old uh, Sikkim combo, too. You know, it's... Uh, and in PvP? Well, in PvP, it's probably still not coming back. I mean, like, there's there are, there are alternatives that kind of a little bit better. But who knows? Like, I think it's probably still playable. I think it's very unpopular. Not a lot of people play it, so... The potential really isn't there, but I don't think the changes really affect things um, that much there.